Hello, my name is Nick Brule, and I'm a retired lieutenant with the Metropolitan Police Department. I'm also a board member with the Metropolitan Police Department's Memorial and Museum Project. This is a project that is working to renovate the memorial fountain for our fallen officers, as well as to preserve the Metropolitan Police Department's history. The Metropolitan Police Department's collection goes from 1857 all the way to the present and is continuing to gather artifacts. The oldest item in our collection is the policeman's rattle, or the roundsman's rattle, that was used in 1857 right up to about 1860, prior to the formation of the Metropolitan Police Department. It's actually a warning device that patrolmen or roundsmen would carry with them to alert other officers to trouble and to summon help. The way this would work is you would spin it around, and as you spin it around, it makes a very audible clacking sound that in the small confines of the city and certain, certainly across blocks can be heard by a patrolman nearby to summon help. This item is from about 1857, prior to the Civil War, and is one of the oldest items in our archive. One of the most important items we have in our collection is a precinct blotter that records the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln in April of 1865. This entry, which is very detailed, records the fact that the president was shot while sitting in a box at Ford's Theater, and it goes on to record the somber mood of the nation following the assassination of the president. And lists John Wilkes Booth as the suspect in the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. So this is a really important part of national as well as DC history. Another item from our archive is a set of handcuffs. Back in 1881, a man by the name of Charles Guiteau waited for President Garfield, who was at the Potomac train station, waiting for a train. While he was waiting, Charles Guiteau shot the president with a bulldog revolver. A patrolman by the name of Patrick Kearney was immediately able to arrest Guiteau as the shooter, recover the handgun, and place these on the assassin. He was eventually hanged after being found guilty of assassinating the President of the United States, James Garfield. This is a bicycle patrolman's hat. You see the badge number is 483. The Metropolitan Police Department had bicycle officers in the 1890s through the 1900s. And this is the soft cover that they would wear. So this hat is very old. We worked very hard to preserve it. Most people see this and they think that this is a baton or a billy club. It does look like a club, but it is not. It is a gas gun used to disperse a chemical irritant into a crowd. It has a device here that you pull back, which is the trigger, and then you press this once the cartridge is in this housing, and it will dispense and disperse the gas out towards the crowd. And this is from the 1920s and was used for quite a while after that. Early on in the history of the Metropolitan Police Department, stations would have police matrons, women, who would be in charge of handling children as well as female prisoners. We have this item, which is a purse that was issued to all female officers in the 1960s. And it's unique because on the inside, it has a thumb break for their issued service weapon. Later on, the purses that would then be issued to detectives would have a break in the middle so the female officers would be able to reach in between the two pouches on the purse and quickly retrieve their service weapon if they needed it. This is a baton. It's commonly referred to as a nightstick or a billy club, but this is what a policeman was issued and it's made of wood. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are very ornate, others are a little more simple in their design, but some came loaded, which meant that there is a vein of lead in the middle of this, which of course would make it swing a little bit harder and hit a little bit harder. We have a number of unique battens in our collection. So one of my favorite items of the collection is a large cell block key that was donated by a retired policeman who regularly arrested a man by the last name of Cherry for being drunk in public, which used to be a charge here in the District of Columbia, and he would be put in the same jail cell, and it was referred to as Cherry Prison, and this is the key to that cell. So 
I'm holding one of our oldest badges that's in our collection. And one of the unique things about the Metropolitan Police Department is that our badge has not changed since 1861. In 1861, the original badge was designed and it has the United States Capitol on it as the main symbol in the badge. And that was actually added to the badge before the Capitol was even completed. The Metropolitan Police Department was founded in 1861 prior to the Civil War and the Capitol Dome was still under construction during that period. And then in 1919, the letters DC would be added on either side. The other item I'm holding here is a Chief's Cross badge. And this is a unique item. This badge was developed in 1877. This is a badge that is issued to the Lieutenant of the Metropolitan Police Harbor Branch, who also has the duties of Harbor Master. The Harbor Branch has been in service since 1870. The Metropolitan Police patrols the Potomac River and the Anacostia River, so it's a unique piece of DC history and a unique piece of Metropolitan Police history. But there are also badges for unique assignments. The Metropolitan Police Department used to have a full band, and each band member had a badge. Detectives have their own badge, as well as sergeants. Our chaplains all have chaplain badges, and prior to women being pulled into the regular force, women who were assigned to the Women's Bureau had their own badges. So one of the special things about the Metropolitan Police Department is that every four years, we have the presidential inauguration here in the city. These badges were specially created to be given to out-of-town detectives who would come to Washington, D.C. to help supplement the Metropolitan Police Department during the inauguration. This particular badge is a Roosevelt Wallace badge that was silver instead of the traditional rose gold due to the war. Those badges were created specially in 1933, beginning with Roosevelt's first inauguration, and is a tradition that is still carried on today. So as you've seen, we have quite an array of badges. So I'm holding an annual report that was prepared by the Metropolitan Police Department in 1907. These books contain a lot of amazing history and facts about the Metropolitan Police Department and the city of Washington, D.C. The oldest annual report that we have in our archive is from 1880. We have a whole series of these annual reports going all the way up to the present day. The police department has a number of other items apart from just badges and blotters. We have one of the earliest versions of a police call box used to communicate with the precinct houses by footmen, and we have an array of radios charting from the beginning all the way up to the most modern type of communication. We also have a number of large beat maps that show the city in a grid and divide each one of the precincts into smaller beats. Each officer was assigned to patrol a beat. We have a police motorcycle with sidecar from 1982, and we also have a collection of historic uniforms coming all the way up from 1880s to the present day. We have arrest books, and arrest books record the names of the suspect and the crimes that they're charged with. One of the important arrest books that we have in our possession is from 1972. It has the names of the four burglars arrested at the Watergate Hotel by three second district tactical officers. This arrest, of course, was the beginning of the investigation into the President of the United States. An interesting fact about this arrest book is that the arresting officers suspected that they were being given false names, and in fact they were. This unusual looking item is what we call a sleeping dragon. That is from the 2000 International Monetary Fund demonstrations. This was a very raucous time in the city when tens of thousands of demonstrators came to Washington, D.C. This is one of those items that demonstrators would use to try and thwart the police's ability to arrest them and to clear the streets. So the police had to come up with a unique way of getting in to then unlace their fingers and try to do so without harming anybody. The Metropolitan Police Department has an incredible array of historic items in its archive. And we certainly encourage our retirees and family members who have historic items that they would like to turn over. We'd certainly like to have them in our collection to help showcase the incredible history of the Metropolitan Police Department.